The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Second chapter, text 7 to 11. By His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded in March 1966 in New York. So these are opulences. Wealth, uh, strength, uh, fame, uh, beauty, knowledge and renunciation. Anyone who possesses uh, all these six opulences in full, he is God. That is the definition of God. Anyone. So when Krishna was present on this earth, he uh, saw his opulence, opulences in full. Uh, opulences in full. Of course, and we, we have got all these historical records about him. Now, so far as wealth is concerned, and, uh, he had 16,108 wives. And for each of them, for each of them he uh, built a palace. And all those palaces were so nicely uh, built that there was no need of electricity or light. It was bedecked with jewels. So day and night they were uh, kind of blazing, you see. So these descriptions are there. Uh, uh, but if, uh, we can, if we forget that, uh, that he is God, then this will be um, something like story that how a man can uh, marry fifteen wives. How you know? But we should always remember that he is God. He is all powerful. And for no other person such and an, uh, historical records are there. Only for Krishna. Uh, uh, so, in strength also, and uh, uh, nobody could uh, um, conquer him. Uh, and beauty, uh, so far beauty is concerned. Uh, uh, when he was on the battlefield, have you seen any picture of Krishna? Have you seen? No. No. Of course, he, anyone of you has seen Krishna? When he was present in the battle of, battlefield of um, Kurukshetra, at that time he was about ninety years old. Ninety years old. He had his great-grandchildren. Uh, he married 16,000 wives and each wife had 10 children. And those 10 uh, and the children, they also got each 10, 12 children, just uh, and their children also. Uh, because he was at that time 90 years old, he, he got at the time great-grandchildren also. Uh, so his family was very great. Uh, now, if you see the picture of Krishna, you will see him just like a boy of twenty-two, twenty-five years old. He is so beautiful. He is so beautiful. And that, now, that is the sign of God. It is stated in Brahma Sangha. Addaita yatsitayanadhyananta rupam adhyam purana purisam navajovanancha he is the original person because from God everyone everyone has God. Therefore he is the original person. Adhyam. Purana Purusam. Purana is the oldest person. He is still Navajau Vanancha. Whenever you see God, that is this is the sign of God. You will find him just like a youth, a new youth. Uh, youthfulness means uh, 16 to 24 years. Uh, so, Navajau Vanancha. That is the sign of God. So you are so beautiful that when you when was a boy of fifteen years old, uh, he is, uh, the whole uh, when I, of, his, of the same age girls, girls of his age, they were after him. You are so beautiful. So in beauty he was super excellent. In wealth he was super excellent. In strength he was super excellent. And uh, in knowledge, now, 
there is a book, Bhagavad Gita. Uh, apart from other books, other knowledge which is imparted to other. Now, here is a book which was imparted to Arjuna. Now, it is so the depth of knowledge that people are still considering great, great scholars. Uh, we are not reading, but uh, Dr. Radha Krishnan, one of the greatest scholars of the world, now he is the president of India. He is discussing. Uh, Professor Ayan Singh, uh, he was living here in America. He was a gentleman, Jew. Uh, I think he was living in America. He was a great student of this Bhagavad Gita. Hitler, Hitler was a great student of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, and there are many scholars who are still reading Bhagavad Gita, trying to understand. Just see what depth of knowledge he has given. It is made by Krishna. So, in knowledge, in wealth, in strength, in beauty, uh, uh, everything was opulent. Therefore, he was one. You, you cannot uh, uh, accept any ordinary man as Bhagavan. Uh, therefore, Bhagavan. Now, uh, Bhagavan Uvacha, and because he has been accepted as the spiritual master, just like a teacher has uh, the right to uh, sometimes rebuke this student. So, in the first instance, he is rebuking Arjuna in the following words that asatyan anusuta sam prajna badan sabhasase gatasun agatan sumsa nan sutanti pandita. That uh, Arjuna, you are speaking just like a very great learned man, but you are, uh, uh, you are, in other words, you are a fool. You do not know uh, how things are going on. Uh, because Pandita, those who are learned men, they would not have lamented just like you are doing. That means indirectly he says, Pandita means learned. Learned man uh, does not lament over a dead body or a living body. Gatasuna, gatasuns. Uh, suns means life. One has lost his life and one has got his life. Uh, a body, a living body and a dead body. A living body and dead body. Just uh, mark the point that a, a learned man, as you are lamenting over the subject of killing your uh, friends and relatives, but a larger man would not have lamented like this. That means you are a fool. When he says, that like uh, if I say, Mr. Green, what you have done, any intelligent man should not have done this. So this is immediately saying, that you are not intelligent. It is in a gentleman's way speaking that uh, Mr. Green, what you are doing, uh, no intelligent man can do this. That means you are not intelligent. So he, here he, he says uh, that uh, you are lamenting over um, the body of your relatives because in the fight you are considering that uh, my uh, friends and my relatives will be killed. So that means uh, they are living bodies and you are lamenting over the uh, over their killing. So this of, sort of lamentation is never done by a learned man. A learned man never does it. Gatasun or gatasun sanamu suchanti pandita. Those who are learned, one who is learned, he does not lament over the body, either a living, a living body or dead body. There is no question of that. Now, because one who knows the distinction between the body and the soul, Parmikam, just like uh, uh, you have heard the name of Socrates, Socrates, great philosopher, Greek philosopher, he believed in the uh, immortality of soul. Uh, so he was 
punish in the court. Hemlock, hemlock was offered to him. At all like, if you believe the immortal immortality of soul, then you drink this hemlock poison. So he drank. Because uh, he was firmly uh, convinced that uh, even if I drink this poison, my body will be destroyed. By the uh, by destruction of my body, I am not going to be destroyed. He was convinced. So did not learn. So uh, a Pandit, when a learned man must know that this body and soul, uh, the distinction, the difference between body and soul, uh, the body is not soul and the soul is not body. And one who knows, he is learned man. This instruction is given first. Uh, so for spiritual advancement, uh, this first knowledge that the body and the soul is different. This uh, body cannot be identified with the soul. Okay? Uh, but uh, the soul is there. And, 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 but body is not so. Body is not so. So every learned man knows it. So <clears throat> Krishna uh, is uh, in, the, in this sense, he is uh, identified the Bhagavan. Bhagavan means that nobody can surpass his knowledge. Because I have already given the definition of Bhagavan that a personality who is in full all the opulences, wealth, strength, fame, and knowledge, beauty, and renunciation, he is God. So, now in this, at the present moment when people are godless, I think this definition is convincing. If you find out a personality, that one who has got in full all these opulences, he is God, then it will be very difficult to present a, a, an ordinary man as God. You will find that uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, when Arjun uh, was convinced that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God, but because in future others will have doubt about Krishna, he requested Krishna, to, will you show me your universal form? And Krishna agreed and showed him the universal form. That means in future any intelligent man accepting a so-called God may also ask him, just show something that you are God. Without showing something simply by false advertisement, one cannot be God. The whole mistake is that we do not know what is God. We consider God may be just like one of us. No. The God who is controlling such a huge affairs of universal administration, He cannot be. He is super conscious. That is super conscious. Now, yes. Uh, Asatyana Nusuta Sang Pragyamana Sudhasya. Now the whole uh, living existence is a, is a very subtle thing. Now this body, this uh, body made of earth, water, fire, air, sky, this gross body, and behind this there is another subtle body that is mind, intelligence and ego. So when we give up this gross body, that subtle body carries me to another gross body. So when this this body is lifeless, that body, subtle body is not lifeless. Just like at night, when this gross body is asleep, the subtle body works. Therefore we dream. The subtle body carries 
two next slides. And I have given in the introduction that uh, how one man changes his body. Janjanabhapismaran loki sajasthanti kalevaram. Now the subtle body, uh, I mean to say mind, intelligence and ego, when these uh, three things, psychic life, is absorbed in a certain kind of thought, the dying man gets a similar body in the next life. They, that we will we have come when we make progress in the study of Bhagavad Gita. Just like the air passing over the rose tree carries the flavor of the rose, and the air passing over a filthy place carries the flavor of that filthy place, the air is pure. But because it is passing over certain conditions, it carries the flavor. Similarly, the mind, intelligence and ego carries the flavor of our present activities to the next life. That is the subtle mystery of transmigration of the soul from one body to another. Now in this, in this life we purify just like rose. The next life we shall get a body. And which is full of flavor. So in, 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 if in this life, <coughs> if, if we practice devotion of God, the next life is to become the associate of God. And that Tintamani, Prakarasadva, we are transferred to that planet. These are simple things. Uh, the whole thing is in my head. <coughs> if I want to be degraded, I can prepare myself in this life for such degradation, in the next life. <coughs> and if we want to uh, elevate ourselves to the highest perfection of life, as to become one of the associates of God, we can prepare ourselves like that. Uh, uh, we will find and a, uh, and a uh, advanced chapter uh, that Janti Deva Brata Devan Pitrin Janti Pitrin Brataha. Now we are trying to go to the moon planet. Now here in this life, if we cultivate uh, ourselves for with the same thought, the moon planet, that means the moon planet, about moon planet we have to hear and we have to think that I shall go in the such and such place, I shall go. Unless you hear, you cannot have an idea. Uh, just like our friend Mr. Cohen, uh, he has left for California. Now, uh, so far I am concerned, I have no idea of California. Now he has uh, told me that after reaching there, he will write uh, about the description of the place. Now suppose if reading that description of the place, I think of going there. So, so I prepare myself. Why must go there? So, and, and, and just like I, I was describing that Chintamani um, Bhav, what sort of trees are there? And you are very much pleased that I must go there. So we have to hear. Unless we hear uh, what sort of God he is, what sort of God's place is, what is the mode of life there, we cannot be attracted. We cannot be attracted. So, here they say there is gatasu or gatasu. There are two, two sort of bodies in which we are now entered. Now, suppose uh, this uh, gross body appears to be and now dead and gone, soft. But one must know that subtle body has carried him to another body. The subtle body is not lost life. The life is there. And so here Krishna says that either of the gross body or a subtle body has to be also left. When you get liberation, when you get liberation, that subtle body, that egoistic life has also to be left. 
Now, see, at any condition, the body has to be left. So, why one should cry for this body? Therefore, Krishna says that when a largest man does not lament over this body, the whole question that a, a soul is different from this body, the whole question is solved in one verse. Gatasam, avatasam, nanu susam dipandita. One who is actually learned, uh, he does not, uh, he has no concern of this body. He is concerned with the activities of the soul. Uh, and so, you are speaking of so many things that if this, uh, my friends die, the, I mean to say, their wives will become widow. These are all according to the bodily relation you are speaking. And you are posing yourself just like a boy, very learned man. But you are a full number one because your whole conception is on the body. Your whole conception of argument with me was on the body. But uh, you, are, you are posing himself just as if you are very learned man. So anyone who has got conception, the identification of this body, he is not a learned man. He is a fool. He may be into the, the calculation of academic education. He may be BA, MA, PhD, DSC or something like, doctor, and all. But if he has caught his identification with this body, he is not a learned man according to Guru Not only according to the whole Vedic literature. This is the first thing. This is a, if we want to make progress for spiritual advancement of knowledge, this preliminary knowledge we must have. But I am not this body. I am not this body. This is the uh, uh, preliminary standing of spiritual knowledge. Uh, this is not advancement. This is simply ABCD. ABCD of spiritual life. In the Bhagavad, <coughs> there is a very uh, nice verse in this connection in which it is stated, Jasnatma buddhi kunapetri dhatuke sadhikkalastradi subhoma ijyadhi Jasnatma buddhi kunapetri dhatuke Kunape means this bag, this uh, bag made of uh, three uh, elements. Now according to Ayurvedic medical system, this body is made of and uh, three elements. And copper uh, pitta bai. Copper pitta bai. Yes, cup. Cup means uh, 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 cold. Coldness. Cup. Cup. What is it called? Cup. Cupping. Yes. Copper pitta bai. Coldness, heat, and air. Coldness, heat, and air. Only these three things constitute this body. That what is called a bag made of three elements, coldness, air, and uh, fire, heat. Heat, coldness, and air. This body is made. Coldness, you can take it for water or secretion. Now, the Bhagavad says that just half of the kuna with Hadukya. If anyone is identified with this body made of water, air, and fire. And the sāsa buddhi is with hātuke. This is a body made of three things. Now, and sabhik kalatra visu. And if one thinks the issues, the byproducts of this body as his own kinsmen, just like my children, my wife, my relatives, my father, my mother, my brother, my nation, my society, everything is due to this body in relation. And there are thousands of women loitering in the streets of the new one. And suppose I have got some bodily connection with you, I call you my wife. And because I have got bodily relation with you, all the children produced by, by my children. You see? So whole thing is, the basic principle is wrong, that I am this body. Now, from the expansion of the body, the whole thing, <coughs> the whole thing is a false. <coughs> because I am not this body, 
So my expansion of body is also not as... But whole world is going on on this false impression. The whole world is going on. They fight, they are fighting between one nation and another nation because due to this body. So the Sāpa Buddhi Kunapetri Dhāda says, the uh, one who is identified with this body, which is made of water, fire, and, uh, and, and uh, water, fire, and air, and uh, the issues from this body as kinsmen and own men, the Sāpa Buddhi Kunapetri Dhāda, Sadhik Kalatrad issues, and uh, 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 I mean the attachment, attachment for such issues, uh, and bhoma yajadhi, and the land from which this body has grown up, that is worshipable. Now everybody is fighting uh, for the land. Oh, and we are Indian, we are Pakistani, we are Vietnamese, we are American, we are German. The fighting, so much fighting is going on. Uh, the land for the land. So land, land has become worshipable, so worshipable, that one is sacrificed his valuable life for that land, you see. But uh, the land is so dear, why? That his body has become grown up from this land. So that is also there, the bodily connection. So jasāsa buddhi kunapeti thāsake sadik kalatrādi su bhoma idyati. Bhoma, in the land, there. They, they, they have no what they, they have no meaning for God, not the Russian philosophy. They have no meaning for God, but they have every meaning for the land, for the land. The land as they identified as worshipable, and they prepared to sacrifice anything for the land. So the Sāpa Uddhi Kunapiti Dhatu says, one who is identified with his body, and one who thinks the bodily offshoot as his own man, and the land from which the body has grown, as worshipable. Jatitha buddhi salile. Jatitha buddhi salile. Now, in Christian world also, that the water of the uh, Jordan river is sacred, is considered. Similarly, uh, Hindus also, when they go to some pilgrimage, they take bath on the sacred river. Uh, but uh, one should know that going to the sacred place, does not mean simply to take bath in that water. Real meaning of going to a sacred place to find out some intelligent scholar, in spiritual knowledge, they are living there, to make association with them, to take knowledge from them. That is the purpose of going to pilgrimage. Because in pilgrimage and holy places, just like my residence is at Vrindavan. So at Vrindavan there are many great scholars and um, um, saintly persons living. So one should go to such holy places, not simply to take bath in the water, but he must be intelligent enough to find out some spiritually advanced man living there and take instruction from him and benefited by that. But uh, he does not go. He takes simply bath and purchases some goods and advertises, oh, I have been to such and such silly place. <laughs> The Jasnāsa buddhi kunapeti dhātu ke and Jasnitha buddhi salile na karhi ke janesu abhigyesu. He has the attachment for pilgrimage for taking bath only, but he has no attraction for the learned people there, you see. So, such kind of man is considered as a sahaya gokhara. 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 Go means and uh, cow uh, 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 and khara means ass. So, uh, practically, the whole world is moving as a civilization of cow and asses. Because the whole thing is identification with this, uh, the big center is this body, an expansion of the body, the attraction, whole attraction is there. Just like at Vrindavan, at Vrindavan, that is practical. Now, here I am sitting in New York, a very great, the world's greatest city, so magnificent city, but my heart is always hankering after that Vrindavan. Yes. Yes. I am not happy here. Yes. I, I shall be very happy to return to my Vrindavan, that sacred place. But then why you are? Now because it is my duty. 
have brought some message for you people, eh? because I, I am ordered by superior, uh, my spiritual master, that whatever you have learned, you should go to the Western country and you must uh, distribute this knowledge. So in spite of all my difficulties, all my inconveniences, I am here because I am in duty. Eh? I, I, that is my personal convenience. If I go and sit down at Vrindavan, I shall be very comfortable there and I will have no anxiety, nothing of the heart, you see. But I have taken all the risks in the old days because I am in duty bound. I am in duty bound. So I have to execute my duty in spite of all my inconveniences. Uh, that is the idea. So uh, this is the whole thing. The whole basic principle of uh, <coughs> spiritual advancement of knowledge, one should first be convinced that he is not this body. He is not this body. Then other and spiritual knowledge will begin. This is the basic principle. Uh, you will find it. You will find it uh, in the Bhagavad Gita uh, that uh, uh, this uh, situation of spiritual life is called Brahma Bhuta Brahma. So, Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma Nasositi Napangsati Samas Sarvesh Bhuti Su Madhakti Lavati Param. So, uh, unless one understands himself, he, he also cannot understand God also. In his, in his misunderstanding, misunderstanding position. Now, what Dr. Mitra is teaching is very nice. Because he is teaching that just, first of all, you know what I am, what I am. That's very good. Uh, but that what I am can be known from the Bhagavad Gita also. That I am not this body. I am not this body. That knowledge, at least theoretically, one must accept uh, that I am not this body. Uh, now, uh, Krishna uh, is uh, describing that uh, what is the position? I am not this body, that's all right. Now, actually, what we are? What we are? I am not body, that's all right. Then, what we are? Now, the next, next um, person is Krishna. We must always know that Krishna, here it is saying Bhagavan was. Bhagavan was. Bhagavan was means that he has got so extensive knowledge that there cannot be any mistake. His authority. His authority. So whatever he says is right. Is right. That is the conception of Bhagavan. Here it is not said Krishna was. Because uh, somebody may doubt Krishna. Well, Krishna who has a historical personality, why you should be so much concerned with Krishna as his general view? But here it is said, Bhagavan was. And I have given you the definition of Bhagavan, that he is all knowledge. So whatever he will speak, Bhagavan, there cannot be any mistake. Uh, for ordinary persons, there are and four, uh, I mean, so the, the, the difficulties, uh, four imperfectness. Just like we are ordinary men, we have got four imperfectness. Uh, what is that imperfectness? That we must commit mistake. We must commit mistake. Our constitutional position at the present moment is such that we are sure to commit mistake. Uh, even greatest politician like Gandhi, he committed mistake. And so many <coughs> great men they committed mistake. So any human that is the thought. That any any man, however he may be great in the estimation of this world, he is sure to commit mistake. Yeah? And another <coughs> imperfection is that, that he is illusion. Illusion. Now illusion you can see illusion means <coughs> taking one thing for another. That is called illusion. <coughs> Just like in the desert, accepting the sand as water. That is called illusion. <coughs> Similarly, every one of us who are identified with this body, he is under illusion. But that's the false thing. 
Uh, but he has no knowledge. Even President Johnson, he is under the illusion. Uh, even the greatest scientist, he is under this illusion. Uh, so, the one is sure to commit mistake, and one is uh, under illusion, and Brahm, Prama, <coughs> uh, Bipralipta. Bipralipta means the tendency for cheating. Uh, and the uh, that is the third. First is that one is sure to commit mistake, one is sure to be in illusion, and one is uh, adapted to cheat others. Now, he is imperfect, but he wants to give knowledge to others. That is cheating. Everyone is imperfect, but he wants to give knowledge to others. Then you can ask, there you go, you are also giving us knowledge. No, I am not giving you knowledge. I am speaking Bhagavad Gita. I am giving me knowledge as given by Lord Krishna. It is not my knowledge. Eh? Not interpretation, it is living. So I give you... Uh, no, that is, that is also in the uh, definition of the condition source. These four principles are there. Uh, it is not my manufactured thing. They, these are information from operative scripture that a cognizant soul has four imperfectness. One imperfectness is that he is sure to commit mistake. He is illusion and he has got a tendency to cheat. And uh, above all, his senses are imperfect. So anyone who is above all these four imperfectness, who never commits mistake, who is never illusion, who never cheats other, and who has got perfect senses, he is God. The next question is that the Mayanadi philosophers, they say that because I am now covered in ignorance, therefore I see individuals. Yes. My, this individual experience that you are Mr. Such and Such, you are Mr. Such and Such, you are Mr. Such and Such, this individual experience is due to my ignorance. Uh, and uh, generally they give the uh, example of a disease I think it is called medical terms myopia. Myopia means they see this uh, moon in two. The eyes become so defective that whenever they see things, they see two. Because, because the thing is one, but due to my uh, disease of the eye, I see one thing, two. There is a disease. That it is like that. Uh, so usually people would read. Anyway, no. that's a uh, that's a matter of abnormal condition. Yes. In abnormal condition, sometimes we can see one thing into two, divide into two. So now that ignorance, he cannot apply to Krishna. Because he is all perfect. And if he is not all perfect, then there is no value of his instruction. A man with defect and knowledge cannot impart an instruction. His instruction, therefore, the whole Vedic process is Parampara system. Parampara system means that uh, I cannot reject, I cannot make any interpretation. Even Parampara Pratham Himang Rajan Sayo Vidur, you will find in the fourth chapter, now you are reading second chapter, uh, you will find, uh, as you have explained in the uh, introduction of Bhagavad Gita, that uh, because, uh, just like I am speaking to you, 
I am an imperfect person. I cannot give you any knowledge. I cannot manufacture any knowledge. If I do that, then I shall deceive you. I can simply present before you the original knowledge. I can explain it in in an understandable way, but not deviating from the original text. Now here it is clearly stated by the supreme personality of God here that. Natu eva aham jatu. Aham. Aham means Sri Krishna himself. Now sometimes we make the grammatical jugglery of words, but I cannot understand. Now, aham, myself, when I speak, aham or myself is applicable to me. When you speak, the aham is applicable to you. But that does not mean because there is a common understanding of myself between you and me, therefore I, not that I and you become one. When you speak, uh, you say, I, I, I speak. When I say, I say, I speak. That does not mean this I and that I become so. The sickness says like that, not to aham. He, that means this Aham Sri Krishna, and not one and you, that means Arjuna, and na ime janadhipa, neither all these kings. That he is dividing the whole audience into three. Myself, yourself, and they. Ah. And again he confirms his survey, all. He never identifies into what. So this is the version of Sri Krishna. Now if I say that our interpretation of Aham, I, myself, yourself, and he or she, uh, different vision, this is due to our ignorance. You can say, I, because I am ignorant, it may be my mistake that I see differently from you. But Sri Krishna, Lord Sri Krishna cannot see like that. He is above all this ignorance because he is all perfect. And we have already defined that the Supreme Lord is full of knowledge. So, he is full of knowledge, supreme knowledge. Now, if the supreme personality with full knowledge, he cannot commit any mistake. No. How can he commit any mistake? Then, then there is no meaning of full knowledge. If you are in full knowledge, then how you can commit mistake? So this ignorance of duality, because they say that we see two because it is due to our ignorance, Every, all, everything is one. But here you cannot apply that ignorance to see Krishna. Eh? Otherwise he is in a section of whole Bhagavad Gita which is so uh, importantly taken by all authorities, all scholars, then it is at once rejected. If it is supposed that Sri Krishna was also to commit mistake or you are in imperfect knowledge, then whole thing becomes rejected. So it is not, not like that. So Sri Krishna, He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, He is in full knowledge and therefore as He says that either myself or yourself are all these uh, persons, kings and soldiers who are assembled here, they are all individuals. In the past they are individuals, in the present we are individuals, and in the future they will continue to be individuals. 
Now, one thing. <coughs> yeah. Suppose another argument is that due to ignorance, just like uh, a, an animal, it thinks that there is water in the desert and they reflect water in the desert. Now, in the desert, due to sun's reflection, you might have experience in the street also during uh, blazing sun, so it appears like water. Now, that animal, because it has no knowledge, uh, it is, and uh, I mean say, uh, flying uh, towards water in the desert, although there is no water. But a sane man like you and me, or a, or a, or a human being, uh, he knows that there is no one. There is no one. So this direction, that there is water, this mistake is committed by the animal because he it has no sufficient knowledge. But one, a human being, who has got sufficient knowledge, he does not commit that mistake. Any, any sane man who has got the knowledge that this is only reflection of the sun, it is not water. He will never go there. He knows that it is, uh, it is useless to search water in the desert. Similarly, if Sri Krishna is in full knowledge, he cannot say that in future also uh, we shall all remain individual. He says that in the, in the future also we shall continue to be individual. Now, he cannot give that misdirection. Suppose we, in the future we shall not remain, after liberation we shall not become, remain individuals, then that sort of uh, misguidance cannot be given by Sri Krishna. Just like a sane man cannot direct you, so just go there, there is water in the desert. Uh, a man with perfect knowledge cannot give you that direction. An animal may go there. But that is a different thing. Similarly, when Sri Krishna says that in future also we all this, yourself, myself and all this, they will keep their individuality. So that is not a misdirection. I will give you the exact meaning. Na tu eva aham. Neither myself, aham means myself. Jatu, jatu means at any time. At any time means present, past, future. Jatu. Kadachit, kadachit means at any time. Nasam, not that we did not exist. Ah. So, not one, so this aham, myself and yourself, na ime, Neither be Janadipa, all these things, that is true. Myself, first person, yourself, second person, and this Janadipa, third person. Nasaivana Bhavishyama. It is not like that in future also we shall not exist like this. Myself, yourself, and all this. Is it? Eh? Survey. Now here it is called survey. They never become swan. Survey. Survey means all. Full of life. Here is Janadipa. As there are now plural numbers, myself, yourself, and they. Similarly, in uh, future also, we shall remain like that. We shall remain like that. Survey. Vayamakapparam Atadi. This is the uh, clear bhasma. Number, uh, you cannot down, number 12, verse of the second uh, chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, 